alongside of Mandy is a living legend. A living legend whose legend will live long after other living legends have long since lagged. Ladies and gentlemen, please <laughs> join me in falling to your knees and adopting the traditional we are not worthy position for the one, the only, Mr. Peter Brock. Rocky, welcome to the program. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now, I thought I got it right. <laughs> now, I've got to ask you something. This has been sort of on my mind now ever since I was but a small child. What on earth possessed you to put a Holden engine in an Austin A30? It was a ra rather bizarre notion, I must admit, but I started off with the idea that maybe I'd put a B-series uh, MG engine in, and that was a reasonable thing. And then I thought, well, big is better. And then someone said to me, look, we fit one of those grey hold motors. And I thought, well, maybe, yeah. And I walked into the wrecking, wrecking yard and I went to a place called Sturt Auto Wreckers in Wagga. And I walked along, here was an Austin A30 body shell, which I chose because of its aerodynamic efficiency and uh, classic good looks and $15 price tag. Uh, and there next to it was an almost then new HD 179 with severe body damage, but mechanically absolutely spot on. It had the 179 cubic inch motor, which everyone knows was absolutely like so fast and so powerful. It should have been banned for human consumption. And that, there it was, the decision was made, and uh, the, the, somehow I shoehorned this motor in, and uh, it was a disgraceful thing to do, but gee, did it go. <laughs> well, it certainly did. I mean, I think it was as much the audacity of it all, I mean, doing it, that really brought you to the attention of people. I mean, that's where it all started, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was a, that was sports sedan racing, and uh, it, that began with uh, that car and a few others like it. Uh, with a couple of Cooper S's and what have you, we battled it out around the tracks such as uh, Winton, Phillip Island, Hume Weir, Hume Weir particularly actually, because the guy that uh, ran that in those days went on to run Oran Park. And when he left Hume Weir, Alan Horsley went on and, and started the Sports and Dan series at Oran Park and I went up there, oh, many weekends. And we, we got involved with Saturday night racing and all sorts of innovative things. And uh, that was the beginning. But um, the car was very kind to me. I won a lot of races with it. But that, I still couldn't get that big break because, as you said, this audacious motor car, this Austin of England with this 179 engine shoehorned in, to a large degree, people looked at that and said, we don't know if the car's terrific or the driver's okay or bit, we can't work it out. The car might have been absolutely dreadful and the driver okay. The car could have been sensational and the driver was hopeless. But um, finally, I, I drove another type of car at um, a racetrack and uh, they had a bit of a yardstick. and. Uh, I got a telephone call and away I went. But that car, I suppose, is a piece of Australian history now, the, the old Austin A30. Is it still yeah. around at all? No, as a matter of fact, uh, we have tried to track this car down. and We've um, we sent out an APB there some years back and said, look, anyone ever heard of where this car got to? And my understanding is that the body shell finished up at uh, the Speedway area uh, near Warwick in Queensland, the Echo Valley Speedway, I think it was called, and the engine and transmission, etc., went into a drag car. However, what we've done now is we're building, we're now building a replica, and it's begun life again, and we've got the old band back together. Oh, it's we've not got getting an, H an HRT sticker on the back. No, no, no HRT <laughs> stuff, no. This is definitely uh, back in the, the, the guys that were involved in that project in that era. We found them all, and we got them all, well, not all of them, but a lot of the guys uh, involved, and uh, we're probably around about mm, eight months, maybe, maybe a year away from... Uh, debuting that car. It's going to be better than ever. I wonder where, where it's just sort of an exhibition vehicle or does it actually well, fit into a historic class? It, it is going to be for a, uh, a, a museum that uh, a fellow called Peter Champion has at a place called Blackwater in the outback of Queensland up near Longreach, that, that area. And uh, Peter's got a, a comprehensive museum uh, of a lot of cars that I've manufactured or had over the years. And he said, I want the A30, let's do it. So uh, my job is basically to oversee the project to make sure it's working out um, according to uh, its specifications. So I'm having to dream up all these things. Did you write down the specifications? Oh, or it's just it's whatever just was happening. It's happened in, in there, yeah. yeah. What was in the tool shed got in there. Exactly. Yeah. It was just like wherever it hit, you sort of glued it together. I mean, if you, if you had a bit of tin around this big and there was a hole you'd cut out that big, you sort of glued it, got the arc welder, and here and away you went. So that was very much the way that we built that car. It was uh, a real home-built special, real dinky die Australian special. So Peter wants the car for his museum, but also he'd like to have it for uh, the occasional little demonstration runs, such as the uh, Geelong Sprints, or perhaps uh, he's got this great vision of me going out on a Sunday morning at Bathurst and doing a hot lap. 
before the big race and that sort yeah. of thing, you know. Yes. But he thinks of special little things he'd love to see this car. So the car has to work. It has to be pretty good. So we're not skimping on uh, brakes and suspension and things like As that. As you might have the first time around. That's right. The first time around, there were certainly certain budgetary constraints. And, uh, well, it had drum brakes for a while and it had the three-speed gearbox for a while and it all those things. had the sing single Stromy carburetor for a while, I might add. But uh, gradually I sort of uh, got the, the car so it was a pretty reasonable sort of uh, racing car in the end. It had 247 brake horsepower and had uh, the gearbox was out of the Opal, the Opal gearbox they used out of the 186S HR series. I mean it had all these strange bits and pieces in it and uh, I'm going to try and uh, recreate it. Well, certainly something to look forward to, or from our point of view anyway, I don't know about yourself, well, you're getting behind the wheel of it. I'm not too <laughs> sure if I should drive it, yeah, I know at the time I was very young and very silly, but uh, it, it certainly, there's an enormous amount of, uh, I suppose, uh, uh, knowledge out there in Australia that uh, this car did exist, and that, uh, that a lot of people ask about it. So uh, there you are, we are we're going to bring it out again. Well, we